Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we fully embrace Rodrigo as our new Split Second member. Elder brought a food chain list for Varys Silvery Moon Ranger, and before you swarm the comment section saying it only triggers once, all he has to do is exile it and recast it. Rodrigo is on a personal mid rangey slash taxi build for Arden and Chrome. David is trying Rog Thrasius Poly Tyrant <coughs> Poly Kraken from Ephon and the Tangelo, and Baal is trying a Tiamat Dream Halls based on the list from the CDH database. Elder is going first and he mulligan once, finding two forests, a mana crypt and lotus petal for ramp, with a sylvan library for card draw, able to cast it on turn 1, worldly tutor to find him maternal scourge or other key creatures and heroic intervention for some protection. Rodrigo mulligan once and didn't want to risk going lower, keeping a city of brass, marsh flats, polluted delta and otawara, soaring city, for lands, uh, well, this last one is more than a land. Lizard Blades is one way to have Chrome beat for lethal commander damage faster. Brainstorm for card choices and Izzard Charm is quite a versatile card. David had to move gun down to 6, finding a strong hand nevertheless. Exotic Orchard and Taiga for lands, with Spring with Drum for ramp, with the help of Rograk. Narset's reversal for interaction and having Underworld Breach at hand already makes that intuition a winning one if it resolves. He sent to the bottom Hullbreaker Horror. Lastly, Balmulgan once and kept an Ancient Tomb, City of Brass and Scrubland for lands, relying on a Rhystic Sturdy turn 2, and if it all turns south, he can try to refill with Windfall. Thassa's Oracle lacks a Forbidden Tutor and Scourge of Valkas is one of the possible combo pieces. Ready for this match? Heller starts the game with a Forest and casts a Mana Crypt, and he still ramps more with a Lotus Petal, to then cast a Sylvan Library. He is not done yet as he cracks the Petal for a top-decked Birds of Paradise and chips the turn. Rodrigo plays a Polluted Delta and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He also top deck nicely a Mana Crypt, and follows it with a Lizard Blades, passing the turn. David plays an Exotic Orchard and casts Spring Lift Drum, just before casting his commander, Rograk, and passes. Baal simply plays a City of Brass and passes. Elder rolls and wins his Crypt Roll. He pays 4 life to draw one extra card from the library. He plays a Forest and casts his commander, Varys, hoping to start venturing into the dungeons. Rodrigo is slapped by his Crypt and jumps straight into combat, attacking Baal with his Lizard Blades. Baal tries to fend for himself, telling he's not on Nows, but he takes the two, uncontested. Rodrigo then plays the Marsh Flats and cracks it for a Tundra. We did, he casts Arden, threatening 8 damage from Crown next turn. David plays a Taiga and casts a Felor Stone, just before casting his other commander, Thrasius Triton Hero, finishing his turn. Baal plays an Ancient Tomb and casts his Rhystic Study. In response, Elder casts a Worldly Tutor, and still in response, Rodrigo casts a Brainstorm to avoid giving Baal any cards. Elder searches for a Toski to keep drawing more cards, and then David responds with a Fierce Guardianship on the Rhystic Study, as it would eventually hinder his plans to achieve infinite mana, and Baal sadly passes. Elder once again wins his Crit Roll. This time he draws two extra from the library, paying 8 life. He plays a Windswept Teeth and then casts his Toski, Bearer of Secrets, triggering his commander Varys Silvery Moon Ranger, and venturing into the dungeon of the Mad Mage as this one provides more scry effects and therefore would better help him find the needed pieces to combo. He then pays Rodrigo in the same manner, attacking him for 3, triggering Toski to draw a card and passing afterwards. Rodrigo is now safe from his crypt. He plays a City of Brass and ponders on saving interaction or slamming face, but eventually decides to cast his Chrom. He goes to combat and Arden triggers, and he attaches Lizard Blades onto Chrom, giving them double strike. He attacks Elder for 8 to try to deny him more cards from the Sylvan Library, however Elder does block with his Birds of Paradise, so Rodrigo passes the turn. David draws some interaction, so after some thinking he passes fully untapped, as activating Thrasius is also a viable line of play. Baal plays his Scrubland and goes for his plan B, casting Windfall. This could be risky as it could provide Elder the needed pieces to combo, but plenty of mana open from David could also be enough to protect the game from Elder. Elder does respond with a Force of Vigor, pitching Heroic Intervention and targeting Lizard Blades and Felor Stone, which David taps for blue in response. Elder cracks his Windswept Teeth for a Forest, and this cracked stone messed up David's plans to win, and as he asks for end sizes, he decides to respond with a Force of Negation, pitching his Narset's reversal to it, as he hints to attempt to win in his next turn with his two cards in hand. The mystery grows for the rest of the table. Elder wins the Crypt Roll once again, and pays 8 life to draw 2 extra cards. He plays an Ancient Tomb and then goes to combat, attacking Baal with both his creatures, three in Toski and drawing two cards. He then casts an Ulvenwall Tracker, triggering Varys and scrying one to the bottom, before passing. On his end step, however, David uses this window to fire his intuition, targeting Rodrigo and he searches for a Brain Freeze, Lion's Eye Diamond and Reality Scramble, hinting at having Underworld Breach in hand. 
and if all goes south, he still has the scramble to try to bounce back on track. He is given the scramble, and we are now on Rodrigo's turn. He wins his crit roll and tries to go to combat, but at the beginning of combat, Elder Heart casts Endurance, which triggers Varys, and he ventures into the Twisted Caverns, targeting Krom to prevent from attacking until his next turn. And when Endurance enters the battlefield, David shuffles his graveyard to the bottom of his library, now hoping to top deck a land. Rodrigo then goes to his second main phase and casts a Felor Stone, followed by a Drenith Magistrate, stopping Elder's plans for Food Chain, and he still has the Izzet Charm to deal with Elvenwall Tracker. We're back to David, and the top deck card is not a land, so he simply passes the turn. Ball is struggling to play this game, with both his plans A and B failed. He plays a Aven of the Spirit Dragon and passes. Elder made some Dark Pact with that script, as he takes no damage once again. He pays 4 to draw an extra card from the library. He plays a Forest and casts a Hope of Girapur, triggering Varys and venturing into the Lost Level, scrying both to the bottom. He then goes to combat and attacks everything towards Ball, as he still has no blockers. Toski triggers 3 times and he draws 3 cards. On his second main phase, Elder casts OK Adversary, triggering Crown, and now he has a decent way to deal with any creature with his Ulvenwald Tracker. He then casts a Soul Ring and finishes with a Skull Clamp. Rodrigo now rolls and loses the crit roll. He casts a Sword of Fire and Ice and proceeds to combat, triggering Arden and attaching the sword to Crown. He then attacks David with Crown, triggering the sword to draw a card and deal 2 damage to Hope of Girapur. After this, he passes to David and he top decks a Gitaxin Probe that he casts, targeting Rodrigo. He sees quite a juicy hand that can stop any of his attempts at anything, so he simply draws and plays an Ancient Tomb, finishing his turn. Ball draws another land, a Windswept Heath, which he cracks for a Taiga and then casts his Scourge of Valkas to force Elder into a tight corner, hoping Rodrigo can hold him back. It enters and it targets Ulvenwald Tracker with its trigger, and in response Elder activates the tracker so that OK Adversary fights the dragon and kills it with Death Touch. This way, once the trigger resolves, the tracker survives as Ball controls no dragons. On his end step, before Elder and Taps, Rodrigo fires his Izzet Charm, choosing to deal 2 damage at the Ulvenwald, in order to protect his Drenith. In response, Elder fires a Summoner's Pact, and searches for an Eternal Witness to have some recursion for Ulvenwald Tracker or other stuff. Elder then gets to his turn and finally takes 3 from the Crypt. He does pay for the Pact as he wishes to continue playing. He draws only 1 from the library as he's slowly reaching Chrome range. He goes to combat and attacks Ball for 4, triggering Toski twice and drawing 2 cards. Still looking for a way out, he casts a Priest of Titania, triggering Varys and venturing into the Runestone Caverns. He plays a Yavimaya Cradle of Growth, but Drenith prevents him from casting Mox Opal. With the last floating mana, he equips Skullclamp on the Priest of Titania which did its job, digging 4 cards deep. He still casts a Carpet of Flowers, triggering Chrome and follows it with a Chrome Mox, imprinting a Wild Growth, finishing his turn. Rodrigo rolls and wins his crit roll. He ponders his attack options and attacks David, as he prefers to draw a card from the sword trigger, and deals 2 damage to Rograk. In his second main phase, he plays an island and casts a Rest in Peace, nullifying Elder's e Witch and Ball's Dream Halls combo. He still puts another nail in Elder's coffin, with an Aether Sworn Cannonist, before passing to David. In his end step, however, David activates Thrasius, scrying to the top and revealing a Nature's Claim. He proceeds to his turn and keeps the Drogo plan going, slowly sandbagging stuff. Ball keeps drawing lands, this time an untapped watery grave, finally achieving double blue to cast his Thassa's Oracle. But it's just that, don't worry, a mere blocker. He puts both on the bottom and passes. Elder rolls and takes 3 from the crypt. He pays 4 for the library trigger and might have found a way out of these tax pieces. He has triple green from the carpet and plays a misty rainforest. He casts a ram through, targeting the cannonist to fight his endurance. However, Rodrigo responds by channeling his Otawara soaring city to return endurance to Helder's hand, stopping him on his tracks. Without much else to do, he equips Varys with Skullclamp and attacks the vid with him, triggering Toski and drawing a card before passing. Rodrigo untaps and takes 3 from the crypt. He casts Sword of Heart and Home right away and proceeds to combat, triggering Arden to attach the sword to Crown. He then turns him sideways towards Elder, as he is out of options. Cannonist is preventing him from disenchanting the Sword of Heart and Home, which in turn prevents his endurance from blocking, so he embraces his fate. Both swords trigger, and Rodrigo did forget to add some more basics to the deck, so he searches for none, and decides not to blink any creature either. And then he deals 2 damage to Ball and draws a card. He then plays a Scalding Tarn and passes the turn. On his end step, however, David fires the Nature's Claim on the Etherson Cannonist, and then still activates Thrasius, crying to the top and revealing a Flooded Strand. David gets to his turn, draws, and attempts to crack his Flooded Strand, knowing Rodrigo would and will respond with his Avenmind Sensor. 
He looks at the top 4 cards and fails to find. He then plays an untapped breeding pool and after some thinking, he does fire his reality scramble, targeting his Thrasius. Still knowing, Rodrigo has an answer, a red elemental blast, that he targets Thrasius with. But David found his protection, a mental misstep, triggering Crown, but neither Rodrigo nor Bal have any further answers, so Reality Scramble resolves, revealing cards until he finds the old Tide Spout Tyrant. He then casts a Mana Vault, triggering the Tyrant, returning the Springleaf Drum to his hand, and demonstrates a loop where he is able to generate infinite colorless mana by floating mana with Mana Vault and recasting Springleaf Drum, returning the Vault to his hand and recasting it, triggering the Tyrant, returning the Springleaf Drum to his hand. Each iteration nets him one more colorless mana. In the end, the last mana vault cast triggers Tide Spout and he returns Drenith Magistrate to Rodrigo's hand, and uses the drum to tap Tide Spout for blue mana and recast Thrasius. With infinite generic mana, he activates Thrasius enough times to draw him some mana rocks, and finishes the game with a brain freeze towards his opponents. And with Rest in Peace, there is no possible way out for them, as they lose on their following draw steps. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone! This game was mainly influenced by the huge amount of ramp and card draw potential Elder was able to produce, every turn slightly closer to the food chain. Rodrigo had to take on the police role, as well as choosing his tax pieces and windows to fire them wisely, but eventually, while being a non-player this game allowed the V to sandbag enough and steal the win. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TG Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Heated Shield, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katerina, Michael Baum, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, and Wicked, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, Join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then.